to understand the design idea of the merge sort procedure, uh, we can also make an analogy to the card playing cards um, example. Okay, so this time, imagine that we have two sorted piles of cards uh, in front of us. So, and they all have, they both have the smallest cards on top. Okay, so our goal is to merge the two piles into a single sorted pile. Okay, so one strategy that we can think of is that we choose the smallest of the two cards on top of the two piles and place it into the output pile. So of course we need to uh, make, a uh, make a comparison with the two cards on top of each pile, right? We make a comparison and choose the smaller one and put it into the output pile. So we will repeat this step until one input pile is empty. And that is the basic thought of the merge, sort, merge procedure behind. So uh, after, we, after one pile is empty, then we simply take the remaining pile and place it onto the output pile, okay? So now consider the basic steps needed in this whole process. It's just a comparison of two cards on, top of, on the top of the two piles, right? So the basic step takes constant time. And since we only perform at most n basic steps, Right, so because they're at most and comparisons to make. So the merge takes big theta of n times. Here, the big theta appears again. So you can think of big theta of n as a generic uh, linear function, like a times n plus b. A and B are constant coefficients. So this is a quite, so this is of course much slower than a quadratic, quadratic uh, function, okay? So now let's look at the pseudocode implementation of the, of the merge procedure, okay? So as shown in the previous uh, slides, the merge procedure should take, uh, four parameters as inputs. The inputs, the sequence to be sorted, to be merged, A, the first index, P, second index, Q, and the third index, R, and Q is in between P and R. P is the smallest index and R is the biggest index and Q is somewhere in between. Okay, so, and that's, uh, how we can uh, represent this. So if we draw a, a table, draw a grid, several grids, and then use this sequence of grids to input to represent the inputs area. That's something we can uh, use to represent the array here, okay? The P is the first index, and R is the ending index, and Q is somewhere in between, and the Q plus one, it is also a critical uh, index, which is right after the index Q. Okay, so that's our representation of the input. All right, so the two um, first two lines of code computes the length of the sub area of the two sub areas. So the first Q minus P plus one is the length of the first area, right? That's N1. And the second and two is the length of the second subsequence. Then the third line, it creates two new arrays, okay, which have plus one of the length of the two sub arrays. Okay? We let we call the first uh, new sub array L, which means stands for left, and the second call, uh, is called RR, which is for right. And they both have M1 plus one and N2 plus one uh, empty elements in it, okay? So these are two new areas with nothing in it, okay? And then we use a two for loops, okay? To 
uh, copy the original elements in A to L and R, right? The for loop from line four to five copies everything from the first subsequence to L, right? And the for loop from line six to seven copies everything in the second subsequence to R, okay? And uh, one more thing, why L and R have plus one number of elements is because we need the end of the array to be some sentinel value, like the infinity value, because this will make our uh, procedure, um, will make the procedure more uh, concise because everything is smaller than the uh, infinity value. So we don't need to frequently check whether the, uh, whether the, and the sub array uh, is, uh, whether the sub array is empty or not, or whether the L or R sent, uh, sub array is filled, is full or not. Okay. So this is simply for the, com the convenience of comparison. Okay. All right, then the uh, key merge operation happens in the next uh, for loops, the last for loop from line 12 to line 13, okay? So this step performs um, that many R minus P plus one, which is basically uh, the number of original elements in A, okay? It performs that many basic steps of comparison and copy, okay? And the elements from L and R, they are taken out. So the L and R, they are like two piles of cards. And the, we basically take out the top two elements from two piles, from the two areas, and then make a comparison, okay? So if the uh, left pile elements is smaller value, right? So if that left elements, the, the elements in the left, in the L uh, pile is smaller, then we will copy the value of it to the original, uh, to the original, uh, to the position, to the current position. And then we will increment the counter in that left pile, okay? If, it is the other way. If R has a smaller value, then we copy the elements in R back to A, and then we increment the counter in R, okay? So that is a uh, straightforward design of the merge step, okay? So basically with the uh, setup of the infinity uh, value, infinity sentinel value at the, la at the, at the last, position of the two piles, we basically don't need to use additional like if, else uh, conditions to, to check whether L or R is empty. So that's the uh, pseudocode implementation of the algorithms. In the next uh, video, we will go through a simple example, uh, particularly with respect to the code here to show how this uh, algorithm actually works.